This is Michael Popak, Legal AF, with some breaking news. We've got three leading MAGA congresspeople, Andy Biggs, Tom Massey, and Eric Burleson, all Jan 6 deniers, all those who have turned their back on their patriotic duty, who have turned their back on the Capitol Police and an American democracy, who are about to propose or have proposed a resolution in Congress, in the House, to try to get it passed through MAGA, to declare that the Jan 6 committee is illegitimate, that all of its work was illegitimate, that all of its subpoenas were illegitimate and that they should be vacated, those subpoenas. And therefore, the people that got prosecuted and convicted, like Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon, who has yet to report to jail, that's scheduled for July, all those subpoenas should be vacated, and uh, and their, and their uh, ultimately their crimes should be vacated. Now, let's take a look for a minute at these three, Biggs, Massey, and Burleson, because some of them may ring a bell with you. Let's start with Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs was one of several members of MAGA Congress who were actually subpoenaed as sitting members of the House by the Jan 6 Committee and refused to cooperate, refused to appear in front of the Jan 6 Committee and talk about his role, his relationship, his communication with Donald Trump and those around him who tried to overthrow democracy. That's Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs is also the subject of the criminal investigation in Arizona, where he is a sitting congressperson led by the attorney general there, Chris Mays. And he and another representative were called before a grand jury, which led to the indictments, ultimately, of uh, people like Giuliani, uh, Meadows, uh, and others in Arizona. So that's Andy Biggs. No, not covered with any glory there. Tom Massey has been all over the map. Tom Massey, a representative, has, in the the beginning, when Jan 6th was first, the Jan 6th committee was first doing its work, and after Jan 6th had happened, Massey issued a statement in which um, he said that that, uh, he was appalled by the violence, um, that he, um, uh, that, that this was inappropriate to happen at the Capitol, and words to that effect. However, later on, uh, he votes, Massey votes against giving Capitol Police Medals of Valor, the Congressional Gold Medal, to U.S. Capitol and Metropolitan Police because he didn't like the fact that the resolution said that it was an insurrection um, and depicted Jan 6 as an insurrection and that and called con- cap the Capitol the temple of our American democracy. He didn't like those. He said there were pending cases. And therefore, if they wanted to just give police recognition, they could have done it without trying to make it partisan. And he voted. He was one of 21 Republicans who voted against giving medals to the Capitol Police for heroism. So uh, Massey's all over the map. Then he goes on uh, various news organizations and declares that after having seen the Jan 6 footage or some version of it, um, he believes that everything was just totally okay. That it was just a walk in the park. There was very little violence there. Um, and so we've got that being Tom Massey. Then you got Eric Burleson, who's from the 7th in Missouri, who also believes that there was no insurrection on January 6th um, and has uh, publicly declared that in numerous ways. Let me read to you from the resolution so you know where we're going with this. This is a resolution not yet passed by the House, but of course, by slim majority, very slim, there is a um, uh, there is a a majority remembering that there's also a group of Republicans that still exist that voted for Donald Trump's impeachment impeachment and to censure him after January 6th. But this group of three that I just read to you really focused on Bannon because Bannon's about to go to jail. Some people out there might be wondering, aren't we a little late on this story, Popak? This is twenty. This is summer of 2024. The Jan 6 committee has been long since disbanded, spent a year and a half of their work. There's been over 2,000 criminal prosecutions by the Department of Justice. There's been hundreds and hundreds of uh, Jan 6 insurrectionists and defendants who have already uh, pled guilty and or have been convicted at bench or jury trials and or have been sentenced and or have served their time. And now we're getting around to the resolution. Hmm, I wonder what could have triggered that. Maybe the fact that Steve Bannon is about to go to prison in July 
It couldn't be. It can't be Navarro because Navarro already is about to come out. So let's just keep this in perspective. Here's the resolution. Resolution rescinding the subpoenas issued by the Jan 6th Select Committee on September 23rd, 2021, uh, three years ago. October 6, 2021, and February 9th, 2022, and withdrawing the recommendations finding Bannon, Meadows, Dan Scavino, and Peter Navarro in contempt of Congress. They blame Nancy Pelosi. It's always great to, to blame one of the greatest speakers of the House we've ever had. And boy, don't we miss her watching the revolving door of speakers and the kindergarten that's broken out in uh, in MAGA Congress. Apologies to all kindergartens. Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored advice to improve your nutrition, workouts, sleep, and even stress management. All you have to do is breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning. And you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. Then Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. You can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals. So you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game because your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does. Optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, etc. It can also track your cycle and adjust your recommendations to keep your metabolism healthy through hormonal shifts so you can keep up your energy and stave off cravings. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash legal AF to get 15% off your Lumen. That's L-U-M-E-N dot M-E slash legal AF for 15% off your purchase. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. So you've got uh, Nancy Pelosi, apparently, uh, was supposed to appoint a 13-member panel with at least five of them being Republicans. But they claim on the second page of the resolution, whereas Speaker Pelosi refused to seat Republican members named by minority leader at the time, Kevin McCarthy, to the select committee, resulting in a solely partisan exercise determined to vilify President Trump and his advisors for the January 6th breach of the U.S. Capitol. That's what the MAGA like to call what happened on Jan 6th. They can't say it was just a tour that got out of hand. So they got to call it the breach of the U.S. Capitol. Okay. So what they're claiming is when Nancy Pelosi set up the panel, um, because the Republicans refused to participate, and the only ones that Kevin McCarthy was willing to put on under a lot of pressure, because he's, you know, his speakership or his minority position was hanging by a thread, were really the like ridiculously right wing MAGA election denying, Jan six denying people like Biggs, Massey, and Burleson, and she refused because this was going to be talk about a futile exercise. They eventually put on, as you know. Uh, Liz Cheney, who became the vice chancellor, and uh, Adam Kinzinger, who's no longer in Congress, but was also a Republican, to represent the Republican point of view, because the rest of the Republicans took the ball and went home. Or as I like to say, they took the practice ball home while the game was played with the actual ball. And that's not the Democrats' fault or Nancy Pelosi's fault. That's how the Republicans decided to walk away from their responsibility in a way we've never seen before. When Richard Nixon, at the time, had led the largest corruption scandal in the history of the American presidency until now. Uh, You know, there was a Watergate committee. It was bipartisan. It was, I mean, people were patriots first before they were MAGA uh, or anything else. Or as Massey Massey likes to say on occasion, uh, where he accuses Congress of being more Zionist than patriot. I mean, he's a weird, weird ass dude. Uh, And he's the one sponsoring this resolution. But I digress. Let me continue. They say that um, whereas the select committee held hearings, issued subpoenas and published a flawed report without the number of members required by the original resolution. That's a lie. And just to be clear, that August body of the Jan 6 committee has been 
uh, cited by federal courts all across the country. None of that has been properly challenged because nothing was wrong with the committee other than the Republicans decided that they didn't want to participate on it. Um, then they talk about Cheney being selected. They don't like that. And then they go on, it's on page three, whereas House Democrats failed to draft and pass a resolution in a manner giving the select committee chair unilateral authority to issue subpoenas, again, attacking the subpoena process. This already got litigated in federal court, by the way, the ability of the Gen 6 committee to subpoena. We had a federal case in the Central District of California presided over by Judge Carter, already, already legitimized all of this. Whereas the select committee promoted numerous theories without first verifying the veracity of the allegations by interviewing witnesses with actual firsthand knowledge of the allegations. I don't even know what they're talking about here. It's a 400, almost 400 page report. That's just the report. They they had thousands of witnesses and witness statements. They had tens of thousands of live video from the uh, Capitol showing what transpired. They had other social media video from people that were on the ground. They took depositions. They had unsworn and sworn statements. Uh, I mean, there's no suggestion at all that they um, didn't speak to everybody. And for Andy Biggs, who's one of the sponsors here, to say, you didn't talk to somebody with firsthand knowledge, he had a subpoena against them and he refused. Now, he's not going to be able to refuse ultimately what the Arizona Attorney General wants to talk to him about through the grand jury, but there you go. Um, they go on to say that um, whereas the select committee was a partisan exercise from the beginning and its hearing and final report are tainted by the unprecedented partisan decisions by made by Speaker Pelosi, whereas for nearly two years, the Gen 6 committee presented uncorroborated evidence that fit its narrative with the intent of disgracing President Trump, his advisors and supporters in effort to influence future elections. Have any of these gentlemen sat in on one of the Jan 6 committee uh, sorry, one of the Jan 6 trials where evidence was presented in abundance in which in which the uh, right now the Department of Justice is like 50 and 0 in trials where they've been put to the test of their evidence. Have they sat through any of that? Have they talked to any federal judge who has presided over the evidence? No. This is talk about partisan screed. That's what this is in an attempt to save Bannon. Whereas members of the Jan 6 committee withheld and destroyed information that could have provided, that would have provided evidence that former President Trump did not engage in an insurrection. That's a lie. That's a lie. And all the evidence that's been presented all around the country, including in other states, proved it was an insurrection. It's already been established. Even the federal courts, even the Supreme Courts almost acknowledge it was an insurrection. And then they go on, whereas the imprisonment of Peter Navarro and the impending imprisonment of Steve Bannon, there we go. There's the tell I've been waiting for. Why is this coming now, so many years after the Gen 6 Committee and its report? Maybe it's because Steve Bannon's going to jail. Represents an unprecedented attempt to silence and marginalize political opponents. Now, therefore, be it. And, and so they have this resolution. What happens next? I feel like I'm doing a little bit of... Um, um, ABC rock, um, schoolhouse rock about how a bill becomes a law, but <laughs> this has to be voted on and there has to be a majority. Uh, and then the Senate has to be involved as well. Uh, and so this is never going to result. Let me, let me just should have maybe said this up front. This is never going to result in vacating the sentences or the subpoenas or the, uh, or any of it by the Gen 6 committee or declaring it illegitimate. This is just a futile, masturbatory exercise by MAGA Congress who were bored in the middle of the summer and haven't passed any legislation, talk about a do-nothing Congress. And so they just pass these things and wave them around. So Donald Trump can wave them around while he's trying to run for election. I and mean, this was all choreographed, obviously, by the Trump campaign. This is just a Trump campaign uh, ad masquerading as a resolution on the House floor. That's all it is. Um, but we got to call it out. You know, I'm not saying it's news, but it's certainly something that I have to analyze here on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF. And so we do this about every hour right here on the Midas Touch Network. And then join me on Legal AF. Now you know why we call it that. It's our podcast on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and then on uh, right here on this YouTube channel for Midas Touch. And then wherever you pick up your, your podcasts uh, from, whatever platform. And if you like what I'm doing, leave me a thumbs up and a comment. It helps with the algorithm, keeps us on the air. We're building this network with our bare hands, and we really appreciate you being here for the ride. So until my next hot take, 
Until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary. Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.